everybody is Dr. Rick dropping in on you. Hope everybody's having an unbelievable uh, week. Uh, hope that you've gotten, gotten it off to a great start to this point. Look, you know the routine. If you like what you see in here on this channel, click the like button, click the share button. And if you really, really like it and you want to hang around for a while, subscribe. Um, for those of you who believe in what we do at the Odyssey Project, uh, our work has been consistent over the last three decades. And we will continue to put in the work. If you believe in the work we do uh, from domestic violence, uh, the rite of passage program for black men lead, uh, mental health programs, and more, uh, definitely our research center, which is the foundation for all of our solutions and program development, definitely look in the description box and see how you can support our work. Um, I often pay attention to emails, comments, and uh, even text messages uh, to the organization surrounding topics that uh, people would like for me to cover outside of the information that we choose to cover. And I try to uh, discern what I think will be good topics to broach, uh, what will be things that we can learn from. Remember, everything from me is about exploring and expanding our our understanding, our awareness through critical thought and examination. Uh, even when we're talking about celebrities, if there's nothing to learn from it, you won't hear me or see me talk about it. Uh, it's never about gossip. It's about exploration of an examination of what we're seeing, what we're hearing, and how it applies to uh, the black collective at large, as well as us as individuals. With that being said, uh, someone asked me to explore uh, the relationship or the lack thereof between Monique uh, and her oldest son, uh, something that came to light again and is now being looked at and talked about because of her interview with uh, Shannon Sharp on Club Shay Shay. Um, I'm going to talk about it in general and I'm gonna tell you something uh, I try to stay away from relationships that people are trying to work through or the lack thereof uh, trying to explore who's right who's wrong um, the question was more along the line is do I think that it's possible for them to uh, heal or mend uh, the broken relationship between the two and the outlying question was do I think her husband, Sydney, is interfering with her develop, uh, healing her son's relationship? And I'm going to explore that in general, not so much personally what's going on with him, and I'm going to explain to you why. Number one is a person's personal business as far as what they're trying to do with their family inside their family obviously she's made it somewhat of a public issue and i believe that's something we need to learn in general even as individuals who aren't celebrities who aren't famous um but we need to learn how to keep our personal business personal uh because sharing it online trying to work it out hammer it or leverage uh social media to make a point or to corner someone is not how you mend relationships. It's not even how you heal. Constantly going after someone online that you feel wrongs you is not the place to, number one, create the environment that's necessary for healing. Number two, mend relationships or create clean breaks. Uh, the, the, the amount of negative energy that flows from settling disputes online or using uh, the, your online presence as a means of leveraging or forcing someone to do something uh, is nothing but negative energy. So we, we, we can say that from the beginning. So that's the first thing that I will point to. Number two is I think people need the time and the space and the privacy to heal again why is why I don't believe in 
settling things online. There are things that have gone on with me personally uh, in business relationships. There are things that have gone on with me in my own personal relationships. And as for me, for the most part, outside of saying how I may feel as a person, I have not made any uh, pointed statements towards any of the people who were involved in those situations and I will not do so. I don't think that's the way you heal. I don't think trying to place yourself in a certain light while by placing somebody else in a darker light is how you heal, is how you grow, is how you develop. I believe that one of the first things that comes in the point of creating the space and the environment for healing and mending relationships is causing as little harm during the dispute as possible as in the dark so that there is less to make up for when the effort begins and that's one of the things i uh the other reason why i won't touch specifically uh, on what's going on with her and her son is for me to do so number one would mean that I would have to have four more insight in what happened in the relationships. I know the general outline, meaning that she was a t young teenage mother when she had him. And obviously that left her in a deficit of just simply understanding how to parent and being a person born to a 15 year old mother and an absent father. I understand that struggle and I understand the years and years it took for me and my mom to build a relationship that was in direct correspondence to the life that lives that we had lived versus trying to make something be what it wasn't and i know how everybody else's opinion flowing through it uh muddies it because everybody's looking for something to leverage to make their point and one of the things i will say and i don't know how this thing is going with monique and her son and i hope that it never really truly comes out from what i understand one of the reasons that it's taken traction is that he has made a video to respond to it and it wasn't something that was positive and that leads to the whole thing with her husband, Sydney, which is what I'm going to close out with. But let me tell you something. Um, being a parent at any age is challenging. Being a parent as a teen, my oldest daughter, I'm 56. My oldest daughter is 38. Um, my son, who's a couple of years younger than her, is 36. So you're talking about. 18 and 36 I between 18 and 20 I had two kids and I had to grow up um, matter of fact I was on the phone with their mom uh, last night who I still maintain a very solid relationship with uh, despite being divorced almost 30 years um, What I'm trying to get at is I can remember struggling and I had my great grandparents who reared me, a man and a woman who held it down and stayed married and did all those. I had that in the house and I still had to struggle through maturing. I had to struggle through understanding that this life wasn't about me only and solely anymore while still maintaining my own balance and uh, maintaining my own identity I, identity i was not responsible for a woman and children and that changed everything and i understand that for their mom it changed who she was and what she needed to be and who she needed to become and all of these different things and then you add in the fact that pops isn't there in those situations like it was for me and my mom my dad's not there my mom's 15 so i ended up in the care of my great grandparents and my mom was reared more like a uh we were we were reared more like siblings than we were like children and the thing is we never had a disrespect there was never a time i disrespected her there was never a time that she got so out of line of me it just we had an understanding that you go mom you 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 on one right now i'm gonna chill for a minute and we understood each other and her relationship with each of my siblings were different and unique in their own thing. And that's for them. And luckily, before my mom passed, 
all of my siblings got squared away with her and who they were and how they felt about what went on. And so I'm glad for that. But here's the thing with Monique. And I'm saying this because there are a lot of single parents out there. There are a lot of children who are still angry. There are a lot of people who only see their side of the situation. And I'm hoping that you get something out of this outside of what's going on on the gossip uh, element of this whole story. And that's why I'm not dabbling or taking shots neither at her son or at her because they both have, I think, legitimate arguments. He has a right to feel how he feel. He knows what he lacked and what he missed and what he didn't get. She also knows what it was like trying to be something she simply wasn't prepared to be. And those things create real life situations that people have to learn how to work through. And what I'm getting, to t I'm trying to tell you guys is trying to work that out in the middle of sharing it in a world where the vast majority of the people who are hearing it don't care about you and really actually are going to bask in the suffering that comes along with it because we are just really truly and honestly right now a society that's miserable and we want to see the misery in everyone else because it makes our misery just a little bit less or a little smaller so my thing is i hope that they do work it out i there's no such thing as can't you can work it out. The question is, are both sides willing to make the compromises and sacrifices and the commitments necessary for true healing? This isn't a switch you flip on. This isn't something you just jump out there and it happens. Now, real quickly, over to her husband, Sydney, because that dynamic is complex in a bunch of different ways. And, you know, some people are going to like what I say and some people aren't. He's our husband. Um, whether you like him, love him, hate him or whatever, he's a husband and there are two sides of this. And I'm again, not going to speak on it because I only know what I've heard from her, what I've seen around with them around and what other people are saying that is nowhere close to the complete dynamic of what's going on behind the scenes. What I can tell you is this, when people are used to using you, and I know this because I've been in a situation where I walked into a place where the woman that I was going to connect with, people were using, were used to taking advantage of her, used to having access to her, used to sitting up and being able to get her and to do whatever they want because of her heart, because of how she cared. And when I walked into that situation, I immediately stood between her and everything that was coming at her and nobody was happy. Why? Because everybody from her kids from, to her family members, to, to friends were all used to having access and wearing her down and doing whatever they wanted to and getting to whatever they wanted to do. And what I did up and I sit up and said, no, it comes to me. So I'm going to go do this. I'm going to do that. And it wasn't that I cut people off. It was that, hey, come to me. <laughs> took on certain roles that she was used to having and from now on come on to me people that I felt were absolutely toxic to her I completely cut that off I'll go deal with them when they need to be dealt with why because it's my job as a man to protect and what so what do you think they felt? They didn't like it. I became public enemy number one from everybody except for the people who really truly saw who I was to her. And so what 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 what, what does that mean? That means that I can't speak for or against because I don't know if he is that or he's the other. The other is he's getting in, he's manipulating, he's controlling, he's doing everything. A lot of people are judging him because of her saying that he in just how he moved, not in what he said, not what he demanded, but in just how he moved and how he handled her, he taught her where her place was. And a lot of people, because we're in a society now where we have an entire group of women trying to prove they can do what men do and that there are no roles, there are no places, and that we're equal. We are not equal. We have 
equal importance, but we are not equal in performance or equal in roles. What you do well, I cannot do. I'll never be able to do what a woman does. And yet what she does is absolutely necessary to the perpetuation of my family lineage, to the perpetuation of my values, my interests, and my principles. And it's immensely important that I understand that, but she can't do what I do. She can't do what I do. And that's what makes me remarkable, exceptional, and extraordinary in this thing. And together we do exceptional, extraordinary, and phenomenal things together. And the thing is, I have to know my role. And a woman says she knows her role or she knows her place doesn't mean a man has put her in a place and he's dominant. It means that she knows how to walk underneath his covering. She knows how to operate underneath his covering. She knows how to form her space and expand her spiritual womb under the protection and security of his covering. That's what we do. But the thing is, we don't, we've got a society where we don't want to be under the covering. Women don't want to be under the covering. They want what they can get from you. But they don't want to be under your covering because they want to still operate as if they're moving unilaterally and independent of anything while still benefiting from having you present. And that will not serve who you are as a man. And you'll start to behave a certain way. Flip side, men don't want to operate in the fullness of who we are. And we don't want to accept the ex extraordinary special uh value that comes in our women we've got a complex expl uh, potentially explosive situation because nobody understands their place nobody understands their role everybody's trying to prove that roles are ex interchangeable uh and exchangeable and that anybody can do what anybody else does and what that does is it minimizes and marginalizes and limits who you are and what you're capable of. And it takes you to a space where we can't possibly be in totality who we are. I can't speak for who this man is, but I can tell you just because you don't like what you're seeing from her doesn't mean that he isn't benefiting her. What it means is people are so used to us being exploited in that industry. When someone speaks out, they're making problems. They're making trouble. And this isn't me defending her. This is me just telling you the truth. We are so used to being compliant and complacent that when someone decides I'm not going to play anymore, that they are automatically the problem. And the way that we justify it is by looking at all of the people who are compliant, who's got more money than they do. So we determine that because they have more money, they're obviously doing it the right way. No, they're being rewarded for their compliance. They're being rewarded for their buffering. They're being rewarded for their misleading of a group of people and even an entire nation. They are being rewarded because they got you distracted from the things that really matter by the people who really and truly have the power. And that's the thing you have to make up in your mind at some point in time, whether or not you're going to walk in true integrity, which means that you may have have to pass up on some money. You may have to pass up on some opportunities. You may have to fight and drudge 15 times harder than the person you're more talented and more uh, intellectually gifted than in order to get half of what they have solely because you won't fold over, roll over, and bend over. And that's the reality. Whether that's the totality of the case for this, I'm not here to fight her battle. She's a grown woman and she has a husband. But what I can tell you is just because you don't like what she's saying doesn't mean it isn't true. Matter of fact, I have stood up and watching for the most part, with the exception of a couple of couple of people saying a few things, the vast majority of which said people saying they don't like it. People are calling her mad and angry and bitter and 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 all the people. But very few people are saying you're lying and producing, producing results. Matter of fact, if you want to go check it out, you can look, search and look for the uh, the um, receipts and her receipts are there. Um, 
you just got to be willing to do it and you got to get uh you got to get confirmation bias out of the way see once you make up in your mind that something is a certain way you're searching if you don't have mechanisms in place that's why when we're doing research on a professional level we have what we call scientific method it literally helps us eliminate the biases we not we naturally hold towards something and it also helps us stop from trying to support an idea or theory that we've already established in our mind is true well that's the thing that happens if i go out on google and i look for um all the reasons your business will fail guess what i'm going to get nothing but re it's not like google going to say okay here's all the reasons why your business will fail in contrary here are all the reasons that uh businesses succeed it doesn't work that way whatever you look for you find whatever you a matter of fact there's this thing called a reticular activating system uh, a sort of bundle of nerves at the base of the brain that literally processes information that you take in and stimuli that comes in through your conscious mind and it prioritizes by the amount of time you spend to spend on it as well as the emphasis of importance you give it when you think about it and it determines what's priority so it will identify the things you want to see above the things you don't i give you a prime example you go out and you go to the store and you buy this new shirt and when you buy this new shirt you hadn't seen it before you see it on the rack and you go i gotta have it and then all of a sudden you get out and you start seeing other people with the shirt or the other people with the car or other people blah 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 and with the same thing and you're going wow man all these people and when i bought my shirt no those shirts were always there it didn't matter at the time because you hadn't given it a level of importance by spending your money on it and and on and over it when you saw it on the rack at that moment your reticular activating system uh, gave it a level of priority which meant now your subconscious mind has triggered your conscious mind to be aware of it the same thing happens with confirmation bias that's why you could be having an argument with someone and talking about and you two got two opposing views and you look on your timeline and your view is sitting there yeah if you would have actually picked the other side, it would have been sitting there too because both sides strolled down, but you only saw the one you were looking for. So you got to be very careful what you are actually out there doing when you're trying to observe and come to a conclusion about all this stuff that's going on. You've got to be very balanced. You've got to create some non-biased mechanism through which you're going to interpret all of this information that's being hurled at you at an unbelievably rapid rate and determine how it, it's you're going to see it and what it means to you and what you're going to do about it at the end of the day i wish monique the best with her family uh i hope that everything with her husband is the way she's presenting it and i'm hearing it uh, and i hope that she is able to hammer her way and make her way through uh because i think we need people who are willing to say no I think we need people who are willing to say, I'll pass on that if I've got to do that. Uh, I'm not making her a hero. I'm not saying that she doesn't have fallibilities and she doesn't have shortcomings and I'm, uh, none of that because that's something we all have. And we need to get used to being okay with people not being perfect. Matter of fact, you come across perfect to me. I'm really, I'm really checking for you now because something's not right. So that's my take on it. Uh, Cheryl, I believe you're the one that asked me to touch on this. Um, this is what I have for you. I hope that it makes uh, some sort of impact on what you were trying to look for. Uh, we've got so much work to do as a people. We've got so much to do in our recovering, our healing uh, from generational trauma, from our um, disproportionality in wealth, in this widening wealth gap, in what we are failing to do in business and in uh, public education and so many other areas. The goal here at the Black Voice and the Odyssey Project is to raise the level of awareness while offering solutions so that we can take control of our destiny. We will continue to do that. I, I do ask that if you believe in that, that you show some love and show some support. Uh, the way that you can give is in the description box on that note. I'm going to check out of here. You guys have an unbelievable remainder of your day. Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special 
announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time. You know, outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group, I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you. I'm free to be free.